Well, it is Labor Day Monday, and it's time for our Monday Morning Quarterbacks panel. Term limits are back in the spotlight after Senator Mitch McConnell appears to freeze up again. And for our second half, most signs point to easing inflation. Let's welcome our guests, Christina Antello and Mark Williams. Uh, you all are laboring on this Labor Day along with me. So uh, good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. Hey, Matt, how are you? Uh, doing well. Uh, let's talk about this uh, first topic here, term limits. Mitch McConnell, I'm sure you guys saw the story. It went viral once again. 81 years old, by the way, on his seventh term. He appeared to freeze up for the second time within a month. And then we've got Senator Dianne Feinstein. She's another one who's uh, brought up the topic of term limits. She's 90 years old. I want to really quickly, before I get your opinions, uh, talk about this quick poll here out of the University of Maryland. 83% of voters support amending the Constitution to establish term limits. So we don't see much bipartisanship in this case. Overwhelmingly, we want term limits. So, uh, Mark, I'll start with you. What do you think? I mean, do you think that this is something that should be discussed? I mean, it, it's obviously going to be discussed uh, more and more, especially as the age of of Congress and you know the the, the president get more in the uh, in the public focus. But look, I I think the polling for term limits has has always been super super high, um, and at the end of the day, I think it's eventually just going to be left up to, to to the constituencies of each of these members. Right? It's up to the constituents of Kentucky and the constituents of of California to determine whether they want Mitch McConnell and Diane Feinstein to continue to represent them in the in the halls of Congress. And to that point, Christine. Now, actually, I, I mean, you could argue, well, folks continue to vote for them and they get reelected. Yeah, you know, there's a, I, I, I looked it up in advance. There's 13 members of Congress older than, than Mitch McConnell. Um, so it, it becomes more not just about your age and if that's the, you know, or how many years you've been there, so to, so to speak, but, but your mental acuity. And certainly, you know, Diane Feinstein is having some problems there. Um, some would argue, my friend Mark here might argue that the president is. Some might argue that Donald Trump is, and they're all in their 80s as well. Um, but, you know, it's, it's more about kind of, again, their, their mental acuity. And if constituents want to continue to send them back, then that's up to their constituents. So then I'll ask you both this. What do you think is a, a reasonable age? At what point should you be uh, considering retirement when it comes to Congress? Um, Mark, I'll go back to you. I, th I, I think it's up to the to the individual, right? I know some some eighty year olds that can you know outrun me on a on a good Saturday. So I'm not uh, I, I'm not going to kind of hold anyone to to a certain level of age. But again, I agree with Christina. I think it's up to can they can they do the job and is there are their mental faculties full, full, fully there? Because it, it's rigorous, rigorous work. Yeah. You know, I don't think people fully understand kind of the, the the schedules that these members of Congress have to have to uphold. So again, I think it's up to each individual member. Uh, Christina, are you? I know. Uh... Um, presidential candidate Nikki Haley suggested some kind of mental uh, acuity competence test to make sure that folks are, are, are on it. Uh, do you take that approach? You know, maybe that's something I would, I would think would be more reasonable. But then I also think about the members of Congress, for example, that have suffered physical ailments that everybody else might too. A stroke, for example. Senator Ben Ray Lujan had a stroke, and and he powered right back uh, within within a matter of months. Uh, Senator Fetterman also had, had an episode, and now he's you know he's taken a little bit longer to come back, but he you know he reports that he is back back to work 100 percent, and e even through kind of an emotional piece of that. But you know, it, everybody's entitled to to get ill and to be able to recover from that. So uh, even if you're doing the mental acuity piece from there, you have to know like, well, is it a temporary thing or is it permanent? And, and does, it, does it mean that somebody loses their job? If they're voted in, it's their term. All right. Well, uh, the discussion will continue surely as we're talking about presidential uh, candidates, President Biden and uh, uh, former President Donald Trump. All right. Let's move on to the second half here. Talk about the economy. You know, interestingly enough, inflation numbers uh, remain fairly low last month. And uh, it's giving indications that perhaps what perhaps what the Fed is doing is is finally working. And Christina, folks talking Bidenomics, um, do you think it, it can be attributed to that? Uh, you know, I think it's overall, I mean, it's an economic uh, policy piece that's happening kind of across the world globally. It's not just the United States. I think certainly there are some things that the administration is doing that are helping the United States here at home. Uh, and certainly I'm for Bidenomics, uh, but I, I am I am smart enough about economics to know, though, that these things happen in cycles. I am more worried kind of on the looming horizon about the commercial uh, real estate market and what mm. that's about to do if there is a collapse within these inner cities and what have you, shopping centers all closing up. Office space is still kind of reporting that they're only 30% full in big cities and what is that going to mean yeah. uh, if we continue to kind of work from home. So I, I'm, I'm worried kind of more of an, on, on a larger scale for the economy. It does seem like there's a bit of a disconnect between these numbers and, and what everyday Americans are feeling. Mark, would you agree with that? 
Oh, I couldn't I couldn't agree more. Christina hears it till till I'm blue in the face on uh, on this topic. I think the polling numbers for the for the state of the economy are, are, are through the roof right now with people just genuinely uh antsy about kind of where, where the economy is headed. I, th I think it's something like 75%. You know, you've got mortgage rates at a, at a level that people, you know, haven't seen in in their lifetimes. Yeah. Um, good, good Goods and services are still really, really high. And so while, you you, you know, you, you see the overall kind of inflation numbers ebbing, ebbing and flowing, I think the, the pocketbooks of the ordinary Americans it's, it, are, are hemorrhaging still. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and by the way, the Fed was supposed to meet this month. It looks like that might not happen. We'll have to see if, if another rate hike is on the horizon. Uh, Mark and Christina, thank you so much um, and enjoy. I, hopefully you're off off after this this segment. <laughs> enjoy your Labor Day. <laughs> thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, of course.